Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I installed a new fire alarm system in my garage. I don't think any of you guys know about this new system yet, but as you can see, we've got firelight pulse stations and they're pulling in the light speed protocol. We also have H365 heat detectors. So this can only mean one thing for the fire alarm panel. Other than the fire alarm panel, there's also been many other changes made to the system. Different wiring, different door holder setup, now powered off 120 volts AC. We've got new conduit, lots of new changes to the system. The garage fire protection system is the best it's ever been. The SFP 10UD is gone and it's been replaced. It's time to move on to a new system. The system I think is much better than the SFP 10UD, but you guys can tell me what you guys think of the system later. Let's get into it. Before I show you the new panel, don't worry, the SFP 10UD won't be gone forever. I'm not going to get rid of it yet, maybe someday I will, but for now I'm going to keep it around for testing conventional devices. So we're walking up to the new panel, and boom, here it is, MS9200 UDLS Addressable Fire Alarm Control Panel, Garage Fire Protection System, all normal. I got this panel used but in very good condition. The cabinet is in very good shape, not too scratched up. We got a couple couple knockouts knocked out, but they weren't even original knockouts. They were just ones made in the panel. This panel, I think, is pretty new. I think it was just used in a temporary setup because when I got the panel, the old user did not, did not re-change it to factory settings and it said trailer one through 12. So I think it was protecting some sort of temporary trailer setup, maybe like portables for a school, just temporary. So I think the panel's pretty new. If we open it up with the firelight key. Oh yeah, funny thing is, the seller said that the lock didn't work and it didn't come with a key. And indeed it didn't come with a key, which is fine. I already have firelight keys and I got a bunch new with my new devices, but the lock works fine anyways. So wasn't worried about that, I was just gonna replace it. So we've got our same old batteries, and here it is. Oh, look at that, removable terminals. That's right, it's a Rev3 board. Rev3 board is the newest that the MS9200s come. There's the original, which is really old. It's got the different looking uh, CPU and everything. And then there's, there's the Rev2, which has the same looking keypad slash CPU display. That's all the same, but it doesn't have removable terminal blocks and doesn't support ANN 80s, only LCD ADFs. But this one will support an LCD ADF and an ANN 80 enunciator. Should I ever want one via the terminals for the ANN I believe this is the newest panel I've had. If these dates are correct, this is from 2010 and this is from 2009, which may sound old, 11 or 12 years old, but for fire alarm systems, that's not really old. They don't change that often. There, are, there aren't new revolutions of them too often. Maybe every five to ten years, there's a new panel, but they don't age as quick as, let's say, a smartphone or computer would be. So, in the fire alarm panel terms, this is a very new panel. We've got our outgoing NAX right here. We've got our SLC, and this is wired to class A. So. We go out, go through every device, and then back to the panel. There are a few advantages with Class A, which I could make a video of if you guys would like to see that. I'm gonna be coming out with a couple videos in the near future of installing this and getting rid of the old system. So two videos, there's gonna be part one and part two of replacing the old system, if you guys are interested. I, I'm assuming you guys will probably wanna see the, the rip out of the old system and installing the new one so those will be coming out soon i made a few other changes right here we have 24 volt door control which goes to this 4 by 11 16 box which has a system sensor relay mounted inside of it and i go out with some emt conduit out the top my emt conduit runs along here runs along here kicks inwards continues 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 and then we do a crappy saddle right here. I totally messed up the saddle, but didn't want to waste a whole piece of pipe, so the saddle looks terrible. We do an offset, and that door is stuck on there good. The, 
120 volts makes the magnet way stronger than it is off the 24 volts. So, that's new. Made changes in our electrical panel. This breaker right here, which used to be the fire alarm panel, is now power for the door holder. Now this guy right here is our new fire alarm breaker. So I have a brand new breaker just for the fire alarm panel, correct breaker for a panel, 15 amp single pole Schneider electric breaker. And that, the reason I did this one is because one, I wanted a new breaker just for the fire alarm panel. So instead of just leaving it on this one, having this one as a door control, I wanted a single pole non-tandem breaker, just a standard standard breaker. This is a tandem breaker. And the problem with the tandem breakers is you can't get a lock on on them. They're too small. This one I can get a lock on. Now, not a lock off, a lock on to physically lock the breaker on so someone could not turn it off. Dedicated circuit, there's nothing else on that circuit other than the fire alarm panel. So the system's fully programmed and functional. As you can see, all my wiring is done. It's not the tidiest. I could have done better, but I was in a kind of a time struggle to get it. This is what looks bad over here, is I didn't want to cut my SLC wires super short if I needed to just change anything, but it looks good enough, it gets the job done. I just was in a kind of tight time to get done because I didn't want to go without any fire protection for a night. So I was out here probably programming until 10.30 at night, and then system was done. So as I said, I'm gonna have a couple of videos out on the getting rid of the old system and reprogramming or reinstalling it I didn't really get into programming since I wasn't super for sure with what I'm doing, but I could make a video of showing the, the programming. So there'll be two videos of installation, a video of testing, and then my other idea is, because I know you guys are going to have so many questions about the panel, is leave your questions down below in the comment section of this video or the videos in the future, and I hope to answer them in my answering questions video. So if I don't answer them in the comments, I'm not ignoring you. I'm probably gonna answer you in the video or I might answer you in both, we'll see. Cool, we got a new panel. Let's look at our field device. Fire light key. So right here, we have a BG12LX. And you can see all our devices are pulling in light speed since clip sucks. Or CLIP, whatever that stands for. Something, something protocol. So this is our first device on the loop. You can see BG12LX. Now we have and we have another BG12LX over here. This is device two on the loop. Over here we got another BG12LX device number three. Four, sorry, that's because there's one in my new room I built in here. This is a used one. This one's in a little bit worse shape. All the other ones are new. This one's used. It's older too because it doesn't say Firelight by Honeywell. These ones all say Firelight Alarms by Honeywell. So this one's older before it says Honeywell on them. As you can see, it's a little dusty. And I put this one in this room since it won't be seen as much. So I put the ugly one in this room. So this, I think it's still BG12LX though, just a little dirtier. In this room here, we've got a Firelight H365 heat detector. This is, I believe, rate of rise and fixed temp. Not sure how the rate of rise works on these when there's not a chamber, but just to check the model number here. Um, panel's a little slow, so it'll take a little bit for a... Yeah, so we have... Um, Fixed temp, 190 degrees, or there's also, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, this one's fixed temp, 135, and uh, rate of rise, 15 degrees or more a minute. So this is address number six. Way up here, we've got a Firelight SD365. In my little room right here, or the bathroom, the other one was the little room, this is the bathroom. We've got another Firelight uh, H, H365. Because I put a, I didn't want to smoke in here if a shower ever got put in, you wouldn't want the shower steam messing up the, the chamber inside of it. So that's why we've got a heat in here. 
These look so good. Flush mount on the ceiling. They're a really nice looking detector. I am, however, waiting on a few parts to complete the system. One of those being another SD365 to go in this open area. As you can see, I just have the SLC just complete as if the detector is there. So that I've actually ordered for that detector, but there's a few other parts that I haven't even ordered because I haven't exactly figured out what I'm doing yet. One of those being, where did I put the fire light key? There it is. One of those being that I'm, I'm not sure if any of you guys have seen my, I'm sure some of you have, have seen my video of installing the pull station on the tower in there. That's a conventional pull station. I don't want to put addressable and electronic stuff up there. Contact closure is just more robust. Uh, and that's what this wire is for these two, this brown and blue. That's for that pull station on top of the tower. However, that's a conventional pull station. I'm going to leave it conventional. So for one, I'm going to need a monitor module to monitor it, but I don't... I'm not sure how I'm going to do it off the and It's also going to need an isolator module because I don't want, for some reason, that to short and to take down the rest of the SLC because this stuff is actually a real protection system. This is the only means of fire protection in here. There's no household residential smoke detectors. This is it. This is where it's at. This is the only protection. But the tower is really just for fun and doesn't need to be there and is not sketchy, but it's... I'm not 1,000% confident that that thing is going to last forever up there. Being that it's an indoor pull station outside, and I wouldn't want something to happen to there and for that to bring down the SLC just because that's for fun and take down the rest of the actual protection system. So I'm definitely going to need an isolator and a monitor module, but I'm not sure how I'm going to take it off of there. If I can just come off of the SLC in over there and just have everything else class class. Class A, where it does a loop and then just have a little T-tap off there. I'm not sure if the panel would let you do that or if it would know somehow that you messed up the Class A circuit. I'd have to try that and if it didn't work, reconfigure re how the system's done. So we'll see about that. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'll show you the pull station up here on top of the Right now this pull station is inactive, obviously, since it's not hooked up to the fire alarm system. So it's not going to do anything if I pull it. Nothing happens. Hope I got my little screwdriver thing on me to reset this. It's actually the first time I've opened it in a couple weeks. So it could be messed up. I don't know. It's been lots of rain. We've had snow, all kinds of fun weather stuff. But it looks okay, honestly. A little bit of silicone there. Yeah, looks all right. That's basically the deal with that. I'll let you guys tell me what you guys think because I'm sure you guys will have a, an idea. I think I explained it already. I added a relay in here to do the, you know, I don't wanna, why don't I just open that up? I'll be careful in here because I always assume anything to do with fire alarms, always 24 volts, but this is 120 in there. So you'll feel that for sure. Sorry, I'm going a little slow here with one handed. So I, I, this is controlled by NAC3, which I'm not really a fan of because if the fire alarm system for some reason shut down or lost power, the fire door wouldn't close and you'd kind of want it to go into a fail safe mode where it stayed open. Or the fire door wouldn't close and you'd kind of want it to go into a fail safe mode where it stayed open, but because I'm using a NAC to control it, that's just not how it works. So. Maybe I'll change that. I could use the non-resettable power and go through the small relay built into the fire alarm panel. Oh yeah, speaking of re speaking of small relays, I still have to hook up back up the security stuff to that if I ever get a freaking keypad for the security system. It's making me mad I still haven't got one. Here's what we got inside here. We have our 24 volts control volt control side right there or coil side, maybe that's more used for contactors, but got our end of line resistor to keep the NAC happy. And right here we've got our 120, 120 volts uh, line and load. And we've got our neutral here for the door holder tied together too. So this is system sensor relay. It fits on this DIN rail. This isn't like DIN rail. I'm not sure what you'd call it. It's kind of like DIN rail being you can mount stuff to it. It's obviously made to fit equipment on it. But it's not like the metal skinny din rail. This is like fat stuff. So I, I don't know what I, what's called. I just call it plastic din Here's rail. Here's the model and stuff for that relay. It's a R10EA multi-voltage relay. 
There's some of the specifications and stuff, stuff about it. So it comes in like a little red enclosure, but it's only got two notch hooks, which is kind of dumb. So if I ever want to add more door holders and different things off it, kind of limited unless I want to install a separate junction box, but then it's like, what's the point? Then I might as well just put it in one. So that's what I did. I know you guys are going to be frustrated that I'm leaving you hanging here. I haven't tested, I haven't showed anything, but I will have videos out soon. But I believe for now that's it for this video. So if you did enjoy this video and are looking forward to stuff with this system in the future, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. Any comments or questions, leave those down below. Don't forget I'll be answering any of your questions in that video. Thanks for watching.